This is Sean with Voices of Racing. I'm here with Norma Unser in front of Al Senior's car that won in 1978. And we're starting on a project that's going to be uh, surprising Al Jr. for his 60th birthday, April 19th. And it's going to be honoring the stories of all the answers over the years. What do, what do you think about this project, Norma? I'm so excited about this project and I'm so excited to include all of you and to help tell some great stories uh, to celebrate this milestone birthday of Al's 60th birthday. All right, so these could be guys that ran against him, could have been sponsors, could have been mechanics, could have been people at the tracks, friends and family. And we really want them to just dive down the actual details of those situations. So. Al can flash back or even be, you know, more informed of the situations that happened with his father and, and his uncle Bobby. I think that that's kind of the important part of this is to, to bring all those memories back to the surface. Is there anything you'd like to say to the people that are going to be doing this as far as the race legends or just friends and family to yes. get them to dive in? Absolutely. I'm just going to welcome you to join me in telling some great stories to, about Al and his dad and his uncle Bobby or his cousins, there's there's lots of others out there. Um, just, you know, tell the story. I'm sure it's going to make you laugh, make you cry, maybe even turn a little red. Um, we want to collect these and uh, celebrate the 60 years of Al's life and his um, past uh, uncle and uh, dad. Yeah. Well, we're going to make it easy. They could just hop on a phone call and we'll kind of talk them through all the scenarios and if they have time to also to hop on a video conference call, we can record them uh, wishing him his best wishes for his birthday. And Norma, this is going to be beautiful uh, as it's as it progresses, and we're going to be able to tease him a little bit along the way about the project, but not let him really hear the interviews and, until that big day. So I look forward to the road ahead, and, and thank you for uh, you know having faith in me. And they'll be able to contact me at uh, voicesofracing at gmail.com as well as 317 Five one four five three two one. Yes, and I know you can find me if you need to get a hold of me too. Okay, thank you, and I look forward to hearing your stories. All right. Uh, uh, so real quick, I just want to thank you all for coming, and I want to thank a few people. I had planned. Everybody said, "Why don't you do a roast for Al?" I was like, "Ah, no." And then I thought I'd plan something small, and then. It just kept growing, and people really actually wanted to start giving to our foundation. And I was like, okay, Al, can I make your birthday party a fundraiser too? Okay, <laughs> I'm not shy. So anyway, um, we can you can talk to us about later about that, but this is really about celebrating my husband, Al. And there's a few people I want to thank first, Mark and Laura McAllister, who are angels in our lives. And, you know, they're in the <laughs> go back through the layers we met through NRA and then we met them and then Pastor John and here we are. Um, I want to thank um, the silo who has been awesome. Jeff and Julie and the whole team here. They, they even made my invitation because I was I'm really not that good at doing stuff like that. Um, so real quick and then I want to thank uh, a couple people here that have been with us from the beginning uh, and from our foundation and our race team, and that's uh, Julie Phillips. I know she's here, she just got here. Please wave, a fit. She may have already gotten food. Oh, there she is. Um, yeah, Adam and Adrian D'Angelo, I don't think they're here yet, um, and but they, they will be, and they'll be mad that they miss this. Uh, Pamela Turkeon and Grateful Rescue, who has been awesome in supporting us from the beginning. Um, Bryce and Jolie Curry, right here who uh, with Premier Arms and PA Jewelers. Tell me about it, guns and jewelry and one voice. Let me tell you. Uh, I don't go anywhere else. Um, so anyway, I'm going to introduce Matt. I think that's all I got. Let me make sure. Julie, did you do the D? Adrian, yes, yes, yes. Um, I want to introduce Sean here, who's going to just talk about this project that we've been working on since January for Al's birthday. Um, and it's a, it's a memory of answers. Um, I can't believe there's not this out there already, um, but having lost his dad and uncle this year, we wanted to honor them at the same time as uh, all the 60 years of memories of that. So here's Sean. Thank you. 
Um, hello, thank you for coming. Happy birthday, Al. And I've been able to, over the past two months, interview 45 people at 730 minutes about the answers. And some is audio, some is video with images, um, from Doug Bowles to Mario Andretti, Michael, uh, and Cheever's here, and also Scott Goodyear, and a lot of friends and family. And we're gonna showcase some of these. I originally started my company focused on taking seniors' life stories and interviewing everybody in the family to get all the perspectives, but this was quite an experience learning from, say, the horse's mouth and everybody's details about the answers. And it, it was, uh, it's, quite, it, it, it's quite amazing how many great stories were told. And so I'm gonna kinda go into this and uh, we're gonna kinda go one at a time and do some highlights and I hope you guys enjoy. And this first one actually was in the in the museum. Uh, we wanted to do the, the initial shot. And also these, you, you see these on the tables, you can download them directly from the website. So if anybody wants to have a little bit of memories of the event. And you also can buy the book from the website too. We'll link that up there so if you want to get the check it past. And uh, okay, so here's Jeff, if you could turn up the uh, audio. And now if you like to. Oh, I can stand here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so we did make an adjustment. I actually um, sent Al on Valentine's Day interviews with his mom, his two daughters, and his wife. I thought that would be very soothing. And did you enjoy those? Okay. Uh, two and a half hours of the women talking. <laughs> That was your teaser page. You didn't get to see the name until right now. All right, uh, Mike Leshman uh, with Vintage Indie. This is his, and it's beautiful. This is Sean with Voices of Racing, and I'm speaking with Mike Leshmet. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing great, Sean. How are you? Good. So we're doing a little favorite memories and appreciation for the answers to surprise Al Jr. for his birthday. And uh, we already accomplished your overall uh, phone interview that we touched on a lot of different stories. But if you could just kind of break down, what was the first situations that you got connected with the answers? Oh gosh, going back over 50 years ago, probably the first encounter with Al Sr. was in Gasoline Alley in front of the Bells Parnelli Jones garage after he won in 70. And uh, Al was there with his mom signing autographs for what seemed like hours. He, he signed one for me. Uh, but then again in 71, I was on his crew. And in 72, I was on his crew. We finished second in the Viceroy car, almost pulled off a three-peat. Um, just you know, a lot of great memories with Al Sr. And then Bobby, oh gosh, you know, just being around Bobby when he drove for Dan Gurney and put that 7200 Series Eagle on the pole at Indianapolis, 17 miles an hour faster than anybody else. And, and uh, you know, later on in life, in the past few years, during the month of May, uh, Robin Miller and Steve Shunk would, you know, arrange a dinner for Bobby and Parnelli and Tim Coffeen, myself, Marshall Pruitt, Bones Bossier, just depended, you know, a handful of people. And we'd go to some old school restaurant uh, in May every year in Indianapolis, such as the Iron Skillet or Monolino Inn or something like that. And, you know, the, the stories that Bobby would, you know, he would hold court at the table, Parnelli as well, but, you know, just great stories, great memories. I mean, these guys are icons. And then with Al Jr., probably all the way back, late 71, 72, he was pretty, pretty young, nine, eight, nine, ten years old, maybe. I guess he'd been nine or ten. And, uh, you know, uh, Al and Wanda didn't bring the kids to all the races. They did bring him to some. And, you know, we'd see him occasionally, and uh, I remember and recounted for you uh, on the occasion of Pocono in 72 when we were stuck there for, you know, uh, the rain and the storms, and the race finally got called off. But 
you know, we were all staying at the same hotel, and I would, I used to give Al Jr. my karting magazines. He, he really wanted a go-kart in the worst way. And, you know, him telling me one time, he said, man, Mike, I hope my dad buys me a go-kart. They did, and the rest is history, so. Uh, thank you, Wanda and Al, for buying Al Jr. a go-kart. And, and, you know, we have a great friendship, Al Jr. and I, and, you know, I just want to say how appreciative I am of that friendship and uh, that bond that we have and all that he has done to help me with Vintage Indy. He's our pace car driver. He's a great spokesman. I cons consider him a brand ambassador. Uh, for Vintage Indy in many ways, so, you know, it's just, just, I'm very appreciative and very thankful. Feel blessed to know, know the whole family. Well, uh, what would you like to say to him to wish him a happy 60th? Uh, just have a wonderful birthday. 60 is quite the mile marker, and uh, I've been there already, uh, and it's not as bad as they say. In fact, it's, uh, it's really good, and, uh, I just wish you the happiest 60th birthday you could ever imagine and wish you many more and really look forward to spending a lot of time with you this season again at all of our events. And I look forward to hearing his full interview. Once you hit your birthday, you're not going to be able to until then, but I uh, appreciate your time and uh, we're going to close this one out and I hope you have a beautiful day and I look forward to seeing what Vintage Indy has for 2022. All right. So uh, the next one is a international rock star that you played cowbell with on stage. Oh, really? Hmm, who may that be? <laughs> Too many rock stars in your past? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this rock star, a lot of people know of him, but they probably don't know that he Lily has an ear disease right now and he can't hear. Huey Lewis? Yeah. Have you heard of that guy? Yeah. Here we go. Hi there, Al. It's me, your old pal, Huey Lewis, wishing you a happy birthday. Uh, you know, I guess it's a good thing you were nicknamed Little Al and not Young Al because you probably have to change your nickname. <laughs> anyway. I hear you're only 60, you're just a child. Uh, many, many more. Have a great day. All right, so you got to at least tell a story of you and Huey Lewis on stage. What, what's, I heard multiple things from, from uh, Bradley Craig and whatnot, but just... just to... Well, actually, it's, um, how I met Huey, we had just... Uh, more, we had just won the IROC championship up in... Watkins Glen, and we were in the motorhome, and it was Brad and Shelly, my first wife, and I, and we were going down the road, and, and uh, I heard on the radio, Huey Lewis tonight in Binghampton, and I looked at Brad, and I said, where's Binghampton? And right then, there was a sign that said, Binghampton, <laughs> right, right above it. And, uh, and so I went, we got to go to that concert. And so Brad got on the phone, started making phone calls, and uh, we went through town and then found a, a basically a state park or something and pulled off the road and waited for the for the, that evening to come. And with my motor home, I've got, it, it was a pretty big motor home, and uh, we had a trailer on the back of it. And so we just pulled the motor home right into where he was having the concert and lined up with his buses. Okay? And everybody thought that that was his bus. So we pulled him in there. But, uh, but no, it was, a, it was a very special show. And really the best part of the show was watching them warm up before they went on stage. And because they're like a, a barbershop type uh, band. And so the drummer was banging on a, a, a coat rack and they were just, they just went into one of a, an old barbershop type quartet is what they did. And that, that truly was the show right there. So. That's awesome. 
All right, so you, you saw this gentleman earlier, but uh, we have a little bit of sound issues, but it's the exact same desk, and he's in Pennsylvania. His name's Mario Andretti. And uh, this this was, I, I love this interview with Mario. It was phenomenal. This is Sean with Voices of Racing, and we are honoring the answers with a worldwide legend today. Uh, Mario Andretti, Mario, how are you doing, and where are you located currently? I'm doing fine, Sean, and I'm right here in my office at home in Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania. All right, we're going to kind of take a little walk down memory lane, and the very, very first one uh, was on July 4th in 1974 at the uh, Syracuse Oval Dirt Track. You and Al Unser Sr. Is this is this uh, accurate? You got it. You got it. You got. It. You can see that that we were very kind to each other. <laughs> Why don't you tell me a little bit about this race if you can recall any uh, great moments? It's not only this race, uh, Sean. This uh, in '73 and '74, uh, Al Unser, Al and I, Al Sr. and I dominated uh, the uh, dirt track championship, which all of a sudden uh, sort of separated itself from from the overall national championship. They just had a dirt track series of the champ cars, if you will. And um, Arnelli Jones, you know, gave us two really uh, fabulous uh, cars to drive. And, uh, and pretty much all the races were, uh, you know, pretty much between Al and myself. In fact, in 1973, uh, Al was the champion of that series. In 74, I was. And uh, as you could see, we just fought tooth and nail, you know, not giving each other a uh, quarter inch, you know, throughout. A lot of fun, you know, we're trying to kill each other on the track <laughs> and have a beer later, type of thing. Yeah. Uh, and then laugh. Uh, so it was a lot of fun. As I said, this uh, was in Syracuse, New York. I remember. Who won that race? Uh, uh, since Alice's not here, I'll say I won it. <laughs> and, uh, and as you can see, I think we were coming off of turn four, and uh, it's just really going for it. Uh, but again, great moments, great moments, you know, that um, are, uh, are precious, you know, uh, between, you know, just the. Uh, the, the opportunities we have, uh, you know, to race against one another. So I've been able to see a lot of different photos of the answers over the years, but this has got to be one of the most iconic. You've got Roger Penske and his son, Roger Penske Jr. And then you've got yourself and your son and Michael Andretti. And then you've got Bobby Unser and Bobby Unser Jr. Aller and Alan Sir Jr. So we're, we're exactly, uh, well, was this in Michigan? This is at the Michigan Speedway. And tell me a little bit about this day and this, this experience with, with all four of you guys together, with all four of your sons. Well, basically, as you said, this is in Michigan for sure. And uh, it just happened that, um, you know, uh, Roger has more than one son, but that and his son that was actually dibbling, you know, in racing was uh, was right there with me. And then at the time, uh, I had another son, Jeff, who was also racing, but not at the level that Michael was. So Michael happened to be there. And of course, it was the same situation with Bobby and, and now himself. Uh, uh, but here was a father and son thing that happened to be on the scene. And they put us all together and, um, you know, became a member of the shop for all of us. To, you know, great to reflect on, on those moments. And, uh, and again, a lot of pride for us as dads, you know, to have our kids out uh, there just mixing it up like we used to. Well, that's something that's, that I think is very unique about, you know, you being able to race Alan Sir Jr. In, in, in numerous races, but you also raced his dad. So, I mean, I'm sure for you, you're like, this kid's coming up through the ranks, and he's, he's doing well. And yeah, I mean, going back, uh, when I look at uh, how everything came full circle with us, uh, um, I remember the days when uh, uh, we were racing, Al and I were racing, for instance, on the dirt track at Springfield, 
and uh, my kids, uh, Mike and Jeff, were playing with uh, with uh, Alan Sir Jr. in the mud, and we had to hose him down, you know, on the way home from the restaurant. And you know, and then you know, a few years later, here we are on the same track together. But the other thing that's really interesting is the fact that uh, later on, when Michael and uh, my son Michael and Al Jr. got to the level, you know, of Indy cars. Um, fighting, you know, for the first win, Michael and Al Jr., I mean, they went right to the last lap at, uh, no, at a place like Long Beach, no other than Long Beach, and Michael won his very first race in Indy cars with Al a close second to him. I mean, as a family that, uh, you know, we raced, uh, we ate, we broke bread together and do all those things. And you know you could never design these, these moments, you know, happening um, not only with us as seniors but also with the, with our siblings, you know. So um, like I said, we can go back and, and start, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, reflecting on these moments, you know, to see uh, how fortunate we've been. Uh, here's a moment when you and Tom Sneva and Alistair Jr. you won the race. Junior came in second, Sneva came in third. This is out in Long Beach. Uh, is there any highlights to this uh, race that, that are worth mentioning? Yeah, it's uh, well worth mentioning. I want it. Obviously, it was a very good year for me when, you know, when, when I was able to finish every <laughs> one that year. It was uh, I had a you know, phenomenal year. Uh, to some degree, uh, but with him, uh, and, and you know, to win at Long Beach again, and obviously it was uh, always premium because uh, I, uh, uh, you know, I, I won there four times, and then winning over Al, who uh, you know won there six times, uh, was just you know was actually a very good day, if you will. So yeah, happy moments again. As you can see, we share so much of it together. All right, so we're going to cut Mario off. You know, he's going to have a job for the next 13 minutes uh, on this one. Um, we're going to go to, the, like, here's Johnny Oates, your cousin, right? Uh, next, we have the president of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Doug Bowles. And at the very beginning of this, you get a little bit of echo, but it clears up in a few seconds. This is Sean with Voices of Racing, and I have the president of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Doug Bowles. We're going to be honoring the answers and wishing Al a happy birthday. Uh, Doug, want to say you know hello to everyone and and to Al and and what you'd like to say to him's birthday, and then we're going to go into some memories. You got it, Sean. First of all, thanks for having me. And secondly, and maybe most importantly. Happy birthday, Alan Sir Jr. You're turning 60. I'm a few years behind you, so I'm gonna be calling you every week to let you know how the 60s are because I'm gonna have to follow you into it. But thank you so much for all you've done for our sport. You continue to be, and you know this, you continue to be one of the most popular drivers we've ever had. You led 110 laps here, you've won two races, you sat on the pole. Your career spanned a long time. You ran here 20 years, so a few years because of that split, you weren't here. You are one of the most prolific it, drivers, one of the most prolific personalities our sport has ever had. Thank you for continuing to love our sport, and especially the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and the Indy 500. Thank you. Happy birthday. All right, so here's the first shot that you sent down across the world uh, for the 100th uh, centennial celebration. If you could kind of speak to this and, and just how that all came about. Well, it was one of the things as we're starting to really uh, engage troops and everybody that's in, in, in America and get them excited about it. One of the cool things was sending uh, sending these drivers, especially Alec and Davey in there, getting them to go around the world. But troops are so much a part of what happens on race day. The Armed Forces Radio Network forever has carried the Indianapolis 500. And especially in the 90s when Al was winning races, those troops really knew and appreciated Al. So sending Al out there to thank our troops but also to give the demonstration of a, of a two-seat Indy car actually driving up and down that, the Air Force runways was a really cool way to promote the Indianapolis 500, but more importantly, to allow our, our soldiers, those men and women who are serving our country, uh, to get to know one of the greatest race car drivers in the world, and Alex Jr. All right, so this next shot 
is actually in Michigan, but it's got Roger Penske, Roger Penske Jr., Mario Andretti, Michael Andretti, Bobby Unser, Bobby Unser Jr., Al Unser, and Al Unser. So you've been able to, to get to know the fathers and the sons over the years. Uh, what would you like to say about this photo and just also Penske's involvement coming in and, and just the incorporation with the Unsers? Well, the, the cool thing about this photo is just that it really is, is almost like two generations of the Mount Rushmore of open wheel motorsport. You think about Roger and Mario and Bobby and Al, what they meant to our sport. And then when you go down the next level, you got Roger Jr. who's still involved here with the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But, with, but when, you, when you take uh, the, the Andretti, the Unser, and the Unser kids, it really is sort of that next generation. And what was so cool about the sport in that day is the younger generation got to race against the older generation as they were as they were coming up. That photo is a pretty spectacular photo. I think it really says a lot about that the handing off of the baton uh, to the next generation. And each of those folks are still obviously involved in our sport. Really great photo. Yeah, when we talked to uh, Mario Andretti, he said it was just one of those situations that they were all there and they, they knew they needed to take it because it wasn't going to be that many situations that they're all together with the fathers and the sons, let alone being on their track. So this is an epic moment, the closest finished in the uh, Indy 500 history with Junior and Goodyear in 92, if you'd like to speak to this. Well, there's no better radio call in the history of the Indy 500 than the last few laps of that Indianapolis 500. I, I still remember that day because it was such a cold day. And I know Al probably remembers it because he's driving that Galmer. And the Galmer was not the car to have at that point in time. So when you paired Galmer with the talent of Al Unser Jr., that's what gave that car an opportunity to win the Indianapolis 500. And I'm sure those last few laps he was holding his breath because he was making that car do things that it really wasn't able to do on its own. And our crowd, I still remember the crowd just roaring with excitement that we had the next generation of an Unser winning at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And, and it was just the beginning of, uh, or really it was kind of in the middle of Al being so competitive, but really the beginning of what was going to be five years. But when you came to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, you knew if you wanted to win, you had to beat Al Unser. Right, here's the uh, shot, I believe, in 92. This is the first year of the You can see his kids there in the shot as well. And then this is the uh, next one in 94. Uh, do you remember this one as well? What would you like to speak for as the second winning? I do remember that one as well, and I think all of us remember that one. A lot of it because the car, kind of affectionately known now as the Beast, was such an unbelievable race car. I think Al Jr. Uh, was seeing top speeds of nearly 250 miles an hour with that car as he was going into turn one and turn three. So it was a super, super fast race car. Uh, and, and for Al to pick up the win in that, and I can't look at, it's hard to look at these two victory lane photos and not think about maybe some of the most iconic words ever spoken at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and they were by Alex and Jr., and it was, you just don't know what Indy means. And, and that, that still lives to this day, and like I said, there's not really very many more statements other than maybe gentlemen start your engines uh, that are as powerful as what Al said, and he said it from the heart, and so we talk about that all the time. You just don't know what Indy means, and, and Al really coined that and, and still seeing the excitement of him. So when I see him in victory lane, either one of those years, I just think of, I know that smile on Alex Jr.'s face is because he knows what Indy means. All right, so here's a shot of his dad and him looking at a signed or a checkered flag. Do you happen to know what this situation is? If not, just speak a little bit about Al Sr. So, so my guess on the flag, so what happens every year is the checkered flag that's actually used for uh, waving to the winner is signed by the entire starting field. So my guess is that that is either, um, my guess is it's one of the flags that probably Al was given uh, when he won the Indianapolis 500, signed by everybody that he competed against. So that's one of the traditions as a winner here. You get the checkered flag that was actually used when you crossed the yard of bricks and it's signed by your, you and your other 32 competitors. So my guess is he and Al are going through trying to figure out who, who's what, because some people's signatures are harder to read than others. But you can't look at that photo without just feeling like there is a, a two, there are two people, father and son, who love the Indianapolis Motor Speedway more than just about life itself. And having lost Al Unser Sr. 
uh, last year uh, makes it even more difficult for all of us. Um, and, and I know that uh, that picture is something that Al, Al will treasure, and, as well as all the memories that, that he had with his dad and the talent that his dad uh, passed along to him. Do you want to speak to that moment at all as far as the flag and your father? I honestly don't remember it. <laughs> Dad's probably trying to find his signature to make sure it was on there. Trademark that. <laughs> I'd be getting paid royalty. You get a, like five bucks a shirt, probably. Yeah. All right, so I'm not going to go through all these, but we're going to show a few, and then we're going to uh, do you drifting with your pastor okay. and a Lamborghini. So, uh, my